been on this. Uh, oh. he, he just recently discovered critical race theory. And so he's on this white guilt tour. And he went on his show, which I didn't even know existed until last week. He was talking about how the, the American dream is it doesn't exist for black people. And his, and his proof of this was the three fifths compromise. Like yeah, that, right. that's the, we have not improved. Since then, and, he so he and not only that, but he's wrong about the three fifths compromise. Yeah, exactly. right. The three fifths compromise yeah. is one of the better kind of concepts that the founders came up with to long term in slavery in America. That's what they came up with to long term in slavery in America. That's Jeremy Boring, CEO of the Daily Wire, and they were talking about people being too woke and jumping onto CRT and all the stuff they usually would talk about and complain about, but. The three fifths compromise with enslaved people was a genius, a very smart compromise. Let's watch more of what he had to say. They didn't say a black person is three fifths of a human. They said, you know, it doesn't make sense, slave owners in the South, that you're going to count your unrepresented, unable to vote, and unable to function in everyday life slave population in your census for the purpose of representation in the Congress. Maybe you can't count them. And the South, particularly South Carolina, essentially said they wouldn't join the union if they didn't get to count them. And so the, the compromise was they don't get to count all the way so that you don't get to use Your an enslaved population, an enslaved population to gain votes. Vote. That's, and that's an important academic point. It's true, but it's also like we should just be able to respond. It makes, that makes no difference right now. That has no bearing. It makes absolutely no difference, has no bearing. Uh, sounds like someone needs. Some lessons in CRT that they don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, it goes the point here is talking about how ingenious that three fifths compromise was, and what many people could say is, you know, these were human beings, and since we've detached ourselves like these guys in this conversation did, so much from the fact that these were human beings, enslaved people, that if you say that was a great compromise to call humans three fifths of a human being because the people who enslaved them and want to continue to do so want to count them strictly for the purposes of more political power. Which you gave them, so we can praise the, the 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 appeasers all we want, but they gave them more power, just not as much as they were requesting. Let's go to some of the details here of what this was, in case you guys didn't know. Although the Constitution did not refer directly to slaves, it did not ignore them entirely. Article one, section two of the Constitution of the U.S. declared that any person who was not free would be counted as three fifths of a free individual for the purposes of determining congressional representation gave it to them. The three fifths clause thus increased the political power of slaveholding states. It did not however make any attempt to ensure that the interests of slaves would be represented in the government. So three fifths of each of these human beings could be used for counting purposes, but um, that two fifths of them keeps them disqualified from us giving a damn about the fact that they're alive and they're breathing existing humans. And now in 2022, we can talk about how that was a great compromise. Uh, Dave, what are your thoughts? My thoughts is look, there's, there's always an academic discussion for things. Uh, I just think it's perverted when these crazy people who don't clearly don't know their history and clearly don't know the full sort of spectrum about academia, academic research on this, try to talk about it and make some sort of point. I mean, these people are engaged with saying, oh yeah, maybe slavery was bad and maybe it was terrible that you know people were enslaved, but hey, we, we gave them three fifths representation to their owners. I mean, that's that's a stupid thing to say. That would be like saying, oh well, you know, Hitler wasn't all bad because after all, German engineering, who says that kind of thing? Idiots say that kind of thing. And people who don't want to be taken seriously. And I guarantee the people who are most upset about this, other than of course anybody who cares about the true history in America of racism, academics can't stand it when bozos like this pretend to know something about academic history and about the study of this sort of thing. And it just, it, it, it's so irritating and it's so annoying. <laughs> well, there's one academic that did point this out. I want to jump down to the fifth graph at five and six for you guys because there was these folks that, you know, they're too elitist, they're too smart, they're too busy being professors to talk about the way these things actually affect the way we are today and why we like to ignore them. This is why I wanted to point this out. So there's two reasons that we don't talk about slavery. The first is it's a subject that makes us have to face the ugliness of our of our history against the beauty of American history. That's what Michael Simanja, who's an adjunct professor of African American studies at Georgia State University, said. It forces us to then commit to structural changes that the country has not yet gotten ready to address. Changes having to do with the discriminatory practices, an unequal education system, unequal employment, unequal housing, and how we teach our history without including all Americans. I don't think they can deny those things if they just don't report about it. So the people who listen to them and watch them don't know that these things exist because of the way we've set up our country and the way we set up our systems to discriminate against and our society will just accept it because they're still not really fully Americans, are they? Mitch McConnell said so. There's African Americans, then there's regular Americans. There's still that mindset. Until that changes, our systems will continue to reflect that.